Welcome back everybody, Theme Park Mikey here, King Triton, uh, right there. Today we're at Disney's Art of Animation Resort to do a quick little tour of the grounds. Uh, we're not going to be doing a room tour, but just a quick tour of the grounds, all the theming, pools, Skyliner, and everything else. Hey everybody, Theme Park Mikey here, asking you to please subscribe to this channel. Just give me a couple months, try and impress you, see if it's worth your subscription. Uh, we do a lot on this channel. I do point of view videos, I do vlogs like this one over at Disney's Art of Animation Resort, and I try to put a video up or upload a video every day on this channel. So please subscribe, it would mean the world. Thank you. This is Disney's Art of Animation Resort. And today we're heading in for a resort tour, not a room tour. If you want to see a room tour of Little Mermaid rooms at least, I will leave a link in the description so you can check that out. I did one a few months ago. But today we're just going to be heading in and exploring these four areas of this resort. That's right, the four pictures that are out front display all four areas of this resort. So starting from left to right, they have a cars area. They got Lightning McQueen out front for that. Then they got the Little Mermaid area, which is the area that was built, and then they stopped because of the events of 9-11. And then we have a Disney transport bus that's just doing its job and totally not interrupting me at all, and I don't mind at all, until it starts to move again. Aw, thank you. And then we got Nemo, where they actually have the big blue pool, which is right behind the main entrance here in the, the main lobby. And then you have the Lion King area with Simba. All these areas are great. They're all really well themed for a hotel, uh, let alone uh, a theme park. Uh, and my favorite is the Cars area because it feels just like Radiator Springs in Disney California Adventure. It's just kind of smaller and there's no rides. <laughs> but yeah, let's head in, check it out. Let's start with the uh, main lobby and the bus stops. All right, so turning from the main lobby and all the characters that are out front on these cards, we got the bus stops that are over here on the left. They got them for Magic Kingdom, Disney's Hollywood Studios, Epcot, and of course, Disney's Animal Kingdom. They're also running buses over to Disney Springs and Blizzard Beach. Uh, right now, there's no bus running to Typhoon Lagoon because it is closed currently. Uh, as of this taping, but they also were doing something earlier that I alluded to. They are using charter buses, not the ones that they use for Magic Express, but other charter buses to get people around the resort, such as from Disney's Art of Animation over to Disney Springs. Right over here, right next to the entrance to the main lobby, they got luggage services. You can drop off your luggage here and then pick it up later in the day. Uh, the best use of this, honestly, is at the end of your trip, if you have a full day at the parks and you don't want to carry your luggage around before you take your flight later that night, you can always leave it over here at luggage services and then they get it back to you as soon as you're ready to go. Uh, I used to do this when I would have late flights or red-eye flights out of Walt Disney World, or sorry, out of MCO, Orlando International. I would leave my, my luggage here after I already checked out, go and experience the parks, come back, grab my luggage, and then unfortunately, I'd head over to Disney's Magical Express and take that right to the airport. So turning into the lobby, this is one of my favorite areas out of any resort, is all the sketches, the early ideas for all these characters that are featured at this resort, all along the lobby, and then the multicolor plane that goes all the way across the front desk. The front desk is a little unique because it looks like a little bottle of ink, I want to say, but it matches the colors that are right behind it. It's pretty cool. So they do have another way of basically telling you that you can actually go directly to your room. If you use the My Disney Experience app, you can actually check in, put in your requests, and then when your room is ready, it will tell you your room is ready on the app and via email or text you if you provide your number and your email, of course. Let you know your room's ready and you can go straight to your room either with your phone using the My Disney Experience app to unlock your door or your magic band. That's one of my favorite things here. Just before you actually hit the front desk, they have park hours 
of the current day. We just missed all of them, but they got them showing here and as well as health and safety measures all day long. So this little shadowy area on the left of the main lobby, this used to be a cute little area where kids could come and play, watch Disney cartoons, uh, and every once in a while there would be a children's activities director in here uh, doing t-shirts and stuff like that or crafts and stuff. But now it is empty due to COVID-19 procedures. One more shot of the front desk. I just love the way that it's lit. I love the way that it's, I don't know, it's just, I like it a lot. It's very colorful. It kind of gives you the sense that you're home, that you're welcome, and that your trip is gonna be awesome no matter what. But I do have to say one of my favorite little things they have here of all the animation and all the rough sketches it's got to be how scary Bruce looks from Finding Nemo. Moving over from the main lobby, we've got the ink and paint shop. we got a gift shop inside. They sell everything from snacks to luggage to face masks to little Marvel um, action figures. they got a ton of stuff in here, and they got stuff if you forgot stuff at home, like toothbrush, toothpaste, floss, all kinds of stuff. Hopefully you can find it in here and you don't have to go over to like Walmart or something like that off property if you did forget anything at home. And right now, because of COVID, they're actually having someone outside asking people if they do have reservations or, sorry, a mobile order, the landscape of flavors to head directly through and then anyone else that just wants to shop to come right in. They are limiting the amount of people that are allowed in Landscape of Flavors, so if, not sorry, Ink and Paint Shop. So just before we head into the Ink and Paint Shop really quick, they do have an arcade, the Pixel Play Arcade, but it is not open right now due to COVID. Uh, eventually it will be open, I'm sure. There's a restroom on the left, and then they even have the portable chargers, the fuel rod, system right over here. So that's the one where you actually pay and then every time you see a fuel rod dispensary you can actually swap out your used portable charger for a new one. Alright we're in the ink and paint shop and is it just me or does every gift shop, hotel or theme park otherwise now have their own little Mandalorian baby Yoda section? Is that just me or I feel like that's happened every time I've gone to a resort or any theme park gift shop on Disney property lately? including Disneyland and the Disneyland Resort. All right, here you go. These are Art of Animation specific merchandise. So it's not the stuff you can find in the parks. These are fitted hats. Well, they're not fitted, they're elastic. Adult size, they are $27.99. They're pretty nice. They're made of nice breathable material. It's got Disney's Art of Animation Resort on the front. Um, but there's nothing on the back. Yeah, there's no logo on the back or anything like that. But it's pretty nice. And they got Disney's Art of Animation coffee mugs. Oh, that looks terrible. All right, the last two pieces of merchandise that they have that's specifically for Disney's Art of Animation Resort is this sweatshirt, which I think is really well done actually $49.99 and then this t-shirt over here $24.99 so this is not unique to this resort but unique to Disney World owned and operated resorts they actually sell the moisturizer body lotion shampoo and conditioner in big bottles if you really want to buy it so they got the, um, let's see, where are the prices? The body wash is $18.99, so is the lotion, and the shampoo is $21.99. They got a whole bunch of other stuff in the gift shop. A lot of it's stuff that you can just buy in the parks or even at Disney Springs. Spirit jerseys, lounge five backpacks, t-shirts, hats, sandals, bags, backpacks. All right, that's enough of ink and paint shop. Time to head into landscape of flavors.
hopefully you can hear me over the music, but they have changed the way that they're doing or distributing beverages. So you're able to just walk up and get your own now, but they have it separated. They got entrances and exits, and they hand your cups to you either with your mobile order or if you order with them at one of the registers, they also hand you a cup as well. If you want a cup of water, head over to one of the spots where you pick up a mobile order and just tell them that you want an ice water and they'll hand you a cup to get your ice water. Very simple, I did it myself. That's it for landscape of flavors. If you are wondering, their menu's pretty normal. Pasta, pizza, salad, burgers, chicken tenders, sodas, and coffee. Pretty solid though. I like their breadsticks and some of their pasta's actually okay. But now it's time for the massive, massive, massive pool. So just so you don't lose your way, this is Animation Hall. This is where we started earlier when we were actually over by where the arcade would be and the entrance to Ink and Paint uh, and everything else. There's even a little directory right here. So we're gonna turn from Animation Hall over to the big blue pool. This pool is the largest single pool in all of Walt Disney World Resort. So that pool over by Beach and Yacht, that is a big pool and they do have separate ones in that area as well as a slide and they also have a lazy river. But this one is the biggest single pool. This was under construction for I believe just over two months when I last checked in over here and now it is up and running and it looks beautiful. It looks like everything was repainted and it looks like they replaced a lot of stuff. So it looks great now. So just to the right, they have, <laughs> they're playing Rock Lobster. I love that song. This is the drop off. This is the pool bar. They got pretzels, drinks, and adult beverages. They even have a frozen Jack and Coke machine. That was a huge surprise to me the first time I came over here. I couldn't believe that. But yeah, they got snacks, they got quick treats, uh, specialty beverages, I believe a full bar so they can make a lot of different drinks. And they also have some nice frozen alcoholic drinks as well. All right, so just behind the drop off the pool bar, this is the main lobby still. So we're turning over to our left and we're gonna actually start over here in Radiator Springs, Radiator Springs. I always call it Radiator Springs because I throw in Radiator and Racers together because of Cars Land. It's ridiculous. Ornament Valley, Radiator Springs for our Cars area of the resort. So right out front, you got the Radiator Springs, a happy place. Nice little motto. You got the sheriff right over here, who I love over at Cars Land at uh, Racers. That, that animatronic is amazing. Let's go check it out, see if we can find more of our friends. I apologize for all the Cars Land references I'm gonna be making for this portion of it, but I do love that they have the Cozy Cone Motel, and it's way bigger than the one in Cars Land. This one actually has bathrooms and a washer and dryer in there, um, which is the same for all value resorts. They do have washers and dryers at all uh, the pools that they have, and it's all the little pools and the big ones. Does anybody else remember the original Luigi's from uh, Cars Land? You actually had to sit on a big wheel and move it around, and after about 10 seconds, everyone realized it was hopeless and they kind of just gave up. <laughs> anybody? This is cool too. I love this one, because you got, they're both outside. Luigi and Guido. Next up is Tow Mater, towing and salvage. Oh, you can hear the seagulls. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> Mater's outside. Now, what I really like about the rooms that they have for at least three sections of this hotel, they're the family rooms and you enter the building and you enter your room from inside the building. So it's not like Pop Century or the All-Stars where you'd actually enter your room from the outside in the elements of the heat or the rain and then head straight into your room. These rooms actually have a hallway that you go down in air condition, in covering, before you get to your room. So it's still a value resort and it has better room entrances at least than the Grand Canyon. Over here we got the Cozy Cone Hotel and Pool. The cool part about these 
cones they have around the perimeter of the pool is you can just go in and save one for the day. It's first come, first serve. Over here we got the Wheel Well Motel. We got Sally and Lightning McQueen right out front. This is actually a really good area for pictures. Like if you went to Disney's Hollywood Studios or another park and you didn't get a lot of pictures with characters, you could totally just come over here and get a bunch of pictures with all the Cars characters and the Lion King characters as well. When we head over there, I'll show you those. See, I don't even have to pay admission to come out and see Lightning McQueen and get a picture. He's not gonna talk or make any noises like he does over at California Adventure, but still, this is a great photo op. You don't have to pay to get into a park. You just take a Skyliner or a bus over and take pictures with all the characters. Over here, we got a great view of Hourglass Lake, which separates Disney's Art of Animation and Pop Century. This is the beautiful view of Hourglass Lake from the Cars area at Disney's Art of Animation Resort. Right across you can actually see a Rubik's Cube hiding a staircase. That's the 80s area. You can see a yo-yo, a yo-yo, and I think that's a yo-yo. But yeah, it's a beautiful lookout. But please don't go swimming in the water or go too close to the water. There are things living in the water, such as snakes and gators. And they have these signs out. Danger, alligators and snakes in area. Please stay away. Another great detail of this resort is you'll see all the drawings of characters along each building. And then another thing to add on to that are these random fun facts that they have when you're walking around, especially when you're walking around Hourglass Lake. So they'll have little ones like this. Did you know everything in the world of the film was inspired by cars? The flowers are made of taillights and car fins. The airplane vapor trails are tire tracks and the insects are Volkswagen beetles. That's gonna do it for the Cars area of Disney's Art of Animation Resort. We're gonna head over now and cover a little bit more of the Finding Nemo area. I know we already covered the Big Blue Pool and then the drop off, but we're gonna cover a couple more characters like one of my favorite statues, Crush. So they actually have the song, The Big Blue World, playing at the Big Blue Pool. And I think I'm the only person that thinks that's really cool. <laughs> Ah, oh, I said that way too fast. Anyways, following up in the, the Nemo, Finding Nemo area, they actually have a lot of stuff to do over here. And they also have this. Yeah. This is by far my favorite part of the entire Finding Nemo area, is this two-story tall crush. It looks like he could literally crush you. All right, turning away from the big blue pool, they got a little kid splash pad right here as well, by the way. They got all the kid fish from the movie out here. All those fun little <laughs> splash pads. I just saw a kid just get hit with water and look like he almost fell down. Anyways, I wasn't laughing at that. I don't laugh at stuff like that. We're gonna head towards the Skyliner now and then head over to the Lion King area in just a moment. Just wanna show off the Skyliner station and all that fun jazz. So just behind all these trees is the big blue pool. So if you head straight back, basically from the animation hall straight back. You're gonna hit these restrooms and then you're gonna hit the bridge across to Pop Century, which is where they actually have the Skyliner station. If you are staying at Disney's Art of Animation Resort, the Skyliner, of course, is free to all guests. You can head over here as early as an hour before park opening. This Skyliner does stop here and it does service both Pop Century and Disney's Art of Animation Resort. Now, that means in the morning, it's going to be very crowded and it's going to have a very long line, especially because even before COVID, in 2019 when it did open, they were only putting one party in each Skyliner bucket at a time. So of course, the Skyliner services Pop Century, Art of Animation, and it heads over to Disney's Caribbean Beach Resort where you do have to exit 
but from Disney's Caribbean Beach Resort, you can take a line to Epcot or the line directly to Disney's Hollywood Studios. And at this time, there are signs saying you can take a bus as well from Disney's Art of Animation Resort to both Disney's Hollywood Studios and Epcot. So it's not just the Skyliner. You can take either or. I will say it's a beautiful night for the Skyliner. Right now it's slightly windy and the temperature has finally gone down from 93 degrees. So now I probably would take the Skyliner, but I already took the bus over here because it was air conditioned. <laughs> and I have a small fear of getting stuck on the Skyliner. But if I'm gonna get stuck, I'd rather it be at night when there's wind and no sun directly on me. Next up on our tour is my favorite Disney classic animated movie, The Lion King. You can see Timon right there, a bunch of little times on the building. Let's go see Rafiki. All right, so once you start into the Lion King area, the outside portion at least, not the buildings, you're greeted by Rafiki. First thing you see. I do see people all the time hanging off of him and taking pictures, but I mean, it's Rafiki, so why wouldn't you? Around the corner, I believe we have Simba. Yep, there he is, standing proud on Pride Rock. And they even have, I just can't wait to be king, playing right now on the outside speaker system. Let me see if I can find a speaker and get close to it. They're all hidden in rocks, I can't find them. Oh, here we go. I love the print that they have on the outside of this building with the trees, the giraffes, the gazelles. It looks like you're in the Animal Kingdom Lodge, actually. I'm no animal expert, but I think Pumbaa needs a new coat of paint. That looks really bad. Just another example of the really cool theming that they have here at Disney's Art of Animation Resort. And remember, this is a value resort. It's really weird to me how theming kind of goes down a little bit when you go into a moderate and then only a few deluxe have really interesting theming. Like I get to the contemporary and other resorts, they're different, like the Grand Floridian, but if you really want character theming, Disney's Art of Animation Resort is the best character theming for a hotel, family rooms and the Little Mermaid rooms. Uh-oh, looks like we found ourselves in the elephant boneyard. Again, these are great little photo opportunities that you could go to, and at night this is actually lit up pretty well. And then over in the corner there, Scar is just waiting. So creepy. Last but not least, we got Zazu saying goodbye to us. He looks like he's having a great time. Okay, this is our final themed area of Disney's Art of Animation Resort. This is the Little Mermaid area. Now this one is different from the rest of the resort. This part is normal run-of-the-mill rooms with two queen beds, no family rooms here. You enter from the outside into your room instead of going down a hallway inside and then walking to your room. These rooms are obviously cheaper than the other ones. <laughs> they don't cost as much, but there aren't as many because only one of the sections is normal rooms. So only a quarter of the resort has normal rooms uh, that are themed to The Little Mermaid. So I'm pretty sure that they're getting ready to put a new coat of paint on Ursula or she's using the wrong deodorant stick. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's got to be a new coat of paint, I'm sure. She's not as intimidating when she looks like this. So over here at the Little Mermaid part of the resort, they also have their own little pool. The only section that doesn't have its own pool is the Lion King area. That's the only one that doesn't have its own pool, I'm guessing because it kind of shares the big blue pool, but the big blue pool is shared by all. I don't know. But yeah, they got a cute little Little Mermaid pool over here that's up and running. Came here on a good day, everything's up and running. Last time I was here, a little over two months ago, the big blue pool, blue, 
the big blue pool was closed. I know King Triton's supposed to look happy, but he looks super judgmental. Like it looks like he's saying something really sarcastic. And he's about to like hit me with his trident or something. <laughs> I don't know. The look on his face is just so disapproving. I mean, he is King Triton. He did disapprove of a lot that Ariel did. And there she is. The queen of the hour, Ariel and Flounder. Over at their section of Disney's Art of Animation Resort. I do like how they did a lot of the theming across the rooms, just like they do the theming over at Pop Century, where they cut out some random characters and some bubbles and just kind of plastered them against the railing. Kind of like they do with the random stuff over at uh, All Stars and Pop Century. It still looks good. It's still, the plants that they chose for this little area, they got a real weird ocean feel to them. Or sea, water, heart. Oh wait, that's, never mind. But yeah, I love the little theming that they have here. If you're thinking about staying here and you have any questions, please comment down below any of your questions that I could answer. Um, I tried to cover as much as I could by just kind of walking around and showing everything off. A lot of the stuff that you do have to read it off the website, the official Walt Disney World website. Uh, but yeah, it's a great little resort. They have the normal rooms here at Little Mermaid, two queen beds, normal setup. I'll also link down below, of course. Like I said earlier, my room tour of the Little Mermaid rooms. Family rooms are even better. There's more places to sleep. Uh, and then there's usually two bathrooms, as well as the, uh, I think it's the All-Star Movies? No, All-Star Music family suites those also have two restrooms when you stay in those so that's a big deal for a lot of people especially if they have a large family but that's it for this video thank you so much for watching why did the fisherman suddenly redirect his boat just for the halibut see you all next time again i don't know what it is but there's three coach buses not disney buses moving guests around and taking them place to place not sure what's going on.